Um, we saw what Nick Clegg would do. He was holding a, a press conference earlier and he used some language which you couldn't imagine him using when he was walking uh, virtually hand in hand with the Prime Minister back in 2010 through the Downing Street garden and all was loveliness. He started talking about the Tories being extreme, unfair, not serious. He implied they were economically illiterate and he particularly criticised the fact they were putting the burden of these cuts on people of working age, not those of pensionable age. This is uh, what he had to say. I think it is simply not serious politics of the Conservative Party to say we're so reluctant we're so reluctant to ask the wealthiest in this country to make even a smidgen of an extra contribution, we're going to ask all future sacrifices to come from the working age poor who uh, depend on welfare. That is unrealistic. And not as unrealistic, I think it is unfair, and I think it reveals something about their motives that I don't agree with. Well, with friends like that, who needs enemies, eh? What about the effect on housing benefits or earning over £50,000 a year and living in a council home? The Chancellor's got you in his sights. But the benefits cuts already brought in by the government are starting to have one unforeseen consequence. Some private landlords are refusing to house people on benefits at all. Take the wealthy property owner Fergus Wilson and his wife Judith. The two former maths teachers turned property tycoons have served eviction notices on 200 families who depend on welfare to cover their rent. And he joins me now. Fergus was not the only private landlord doing this, so where are people on benefits supposed to live? Well, that is a, a matter for the local authority, but the difficulty for the local authority is that they are full to capacity. Um, so where do people go? If they are single mums, they get some protection, but in reality it means bed and breakfast. If they are over 18 and have no children, then the local council is under no obligation to house them. But you're kicking them out. The government cuts are what have brought all this about, and the impoverished tenants are taking the flak, aren't they? Yes. So you wash your hands of that. I mean, some people are saying you're a bit heartless. Do you think you're heartless? Well, if I'm heartless, all the other landlords are heartless because we're all doing the same. But do you think you're being unfair? Um, you know, you, you, you're worth, last time I looked, you're worth £240 million or so on. Uh, do you think that you need to put rents up? Yes, I do. The, the situation is this, that if house prices go up, 5%, 8% or whatever, then the rents go up in proportion. That's common sense. All our properties uh, have to stand on their own two feet. It's not a house of cards. If a um, property has a housing with a bit tenant who cannot afford the rent, then um, the mortgage doesn't get paid and we would lose the house as well as the tenant. That's rather silly. If we have a person who's working, who may be an Eastern European, it's our experience that you do not have defaults. If you did, all the people working have got a rent guarantee, so we're paid out anyway. I must tell you, I've not had anybody in the last two years who was working fail to pay a penny. But as far as people on the housing benefit are concerned, it may well be that they can't pay rather than they won't pay. I think it probably is they can't afford it. But we are now over 50% in arrears. So it's a pretty simple choice. Don't you feel bad kicking these people out, given that you know, they might have fallen on hard times through no fault of their own? Don't you feel any sense of guilt when you're kicking them out? Yes, um, we are. It is very, very sad. Particularly, I feel sorry for battered wives who have come to us because we are very much consigning them to go back to their husbands to be beaten up again. But um, the situation is it cannot go on. All the landlords will tell you there's so much default now with housing benefit tenants, you are just simply better off with somebody working. Now, the only judgment we exercise is a financial judgment. There's no other criticism of people on housing benefit. Shouldn't, shouldn't you be making a bit of a sort of moral judgment as well and saying, well, all your rivals might be putting up rent sky high, but perhaps you're not going to put them up quite so high? Well, we do actually not put them up not quite so high because it's a good business tactic. So by not putting them up quite so high, then you have full capacity. But you've got to understand that the difference now 
for many housing tenants is 250 pounds a month and if they can afford to find 250 pounds a month to, to add to their uh, housing benefit then it rather raises a question where's the 250 pounds coming from and should they be getting less benefits Fergus Wilson thank you very much for joining me Matt Kathy joined now in the studio by the Financial Secretary to the Treasury, Sajid Jawid, and by the Shadow Chief Secretary of the Treasury, Chris Leslie. Welcome to you both. Let's start with you, um, Sajid Jawid. Uh, let me read you this quote. I think the words are by now a little bit familiar. Um, the proposed cuts in housing benefits are a monumental mistake, unfair, unrealistic, unbalanced, not my words, not his words, but the words of your deputy boss, Nick Clegg. Why is he wrong? Well, first of all, what you heard from the Chancellor today was that the hard work of the British people is paying off. Let's We're react to Nick Clegg. Nick Clegg has just said that what he has proposed today is a monumental mistake. This is your deputy boss. What and, do you say to that? It is also the same Nick Clegg that agrees with the Chancellor that we need to confront and make difficult decisions and we need further budget consolidation. He actually agrees 100% with the number that was given today in your report earlier. Further cuts after the next election of 25 billion are necessary. Further budget consolidation. Of right. course, given he's the leader of a different political party, he's got to set his priorities about how he thinks those changes can be made. So, if he prefers to raise taxes on hard-working people rather than to look for further savings in the public budget, that's the decision for him, but that's something okay. he can decide when we get closer to a general election. So what's your reaction to what we just heard from landlord Fergus Wilson, who's basically said that you know, most of his 200 tenants, um, as a result of these cuts, will end up on the street? Well, first What's of all, the that's the first that? time I've heard that. Yeah, but that, well, that is the but reality. We're hearing it from someone who actually matters, who will make decisions yeah. that affect the lives of young Britons. But for, as for landlords, I mean, they need to decide for themselves what's the right you decision the reality for them. Yeah. But no one pretends that it's easy to make tough decisions. That's why they're called tough decisions. And that's what we've been doing for the last three years. And what you've heard from the Chancellor today is that Britain faces a choice. We can either go back to the bad old ways, the bad habits of more borrowing, more spending and more debt. That's Chris's way, that's Labour's way. Or we can confront these decisions and go ahead and make them, right. no matter how hard they are. But and welfare reform is a key part of that. Everyone wants to protect the vulnerable, absolutely right thing to do, but we still need a welfare system that's affordable and sustainable but for the your, long term. But your tough decisions are made on the back of the weakest members of society. Is that fair? No, that's not fair at all. But, what but that's what you're doing. Absolutely not. If you look at the budget consolidation that's taken place so far this year, if you look at the people that are paying more in tax than ever before, it's the wealthiest in society. We've increased capital gains tax. We've cut the annual investment allowance that people have on their pensions. We've uh, changed, uh, increased stamp duties, so the wealthiest are paying more than they've ever paid. In fact, the top 1% okay. in society pay 30% in total right. income tax. That's the highest ever. Okay, let's turn to Chris Leslie. So Ed Ball's um, shadow uh, chance gave a statement today. He said, what we need is Labour's plan to earn our way to higher living standards for all, tackle the cost of living crisis and get the deficit down in a fair way. Mm -hmm. That's about as specific as a Miss World acceptance speech, isn't it? Well, it's a funny question, but the reality is, of course, there are different choices you could make. And let me give you a couple of examples of that. We've been hearing about uh, the housing benefit costs. Actually, housing benefit has been rising, particularly for those people who are in work, because the cost of living crisis means that their earnings are falling. And it's no wonder wealth fare is rising. If we had a jobs guarantee, for example, for the young unemployed, we would get them back into work. Not only would we reduce the welfare bill, but we could get them paying taxes in, in that productive way. If we don't go for a jobs and growth strategy that is significant and real, rather than the three years of stagnation we've got, guess what? You will have the massive deficit that they have left us with okay. more borrowing in the past three and a half years than we had under the previous administration in 13 years. Let's get to the specifics of what Landlord Fergus Wilson said just a few minutes mm. ago. Um, what's your reaction to that? I mean, hundreds of people, just courtesy of him, it's, it's, tra it's, 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 tra it's tragic, but that is the reality of the cost of living crisis. But, people so are you would keep today. those benefits in place. You know, what you've got to do is make sure that, yes, you make tough choices and cuts, but you do it in a fair way that supports growth. Those two things are the, are the difference between the parties right now. And what uh, mm. Sajid won't tell you is, he, you know, we've heard about the bedroom tax, but he talks about the other welfare cuts yes. that he wants to talk about. So we heard about... What else is it that he's going to go for? What's the next bedroom tax? We heard about battered women from, being sent back to their husbands. How would you stop that in this particular case? Well, what you've got to do, of course, is stand up and protect those people who are in genuine need. But the best thing is to get them back into work. 
work so that they're not falling back into welfare in the first place. And the, the long-term youth unemployment problem in this country is significant. Not a word about long-term youth unemployment in the Chancellor's speech today. He talked about hard truths in 2014. What about those people who are having to go well, to food not, banks? Well, first of all, Sajid, well, what about those people who well, can't Chris, make well, ends meet to Chris heat their own home at home? Talk about the cost of living went crisis. went up 70% under Labour in their last term. No, what are you, they gave us the deepest recession in 100 years, left the You've country a lot poorer, three years. and that is why people face cost of living challenges. Of course they do. And the best way to deal with that is to make sure we keep having a growing okay. economy that's creating jobs, worse, more people employed today than at any other time in our history. And to maintain that, we've got to keep okay. making the tough decisions. We're prepared to do that. What you've heard from and Chris and what you've heard very from well Labour all along on the, on the tough decisions, can I just ask you this? Decisions. So yesterday we had the Prime Minister say that the, the pensioners, rise in pensions would be uh, protected by a triple lock. So in other words, um, the highest figure they would be raised by. Are you not choosing in making your tough decisions to pander to those very voters that you are most afraid of losing? And those, those are state pensioners who, according to the latest polls today, are turning to UKIP in very large numbers. This is about the election. Well, we're choosing to look after people that have worked hard and saved hard all their lives. No, that says something. Pensions. You're giving to the That's pensioners right. who don't deserve it. In some yeah. cases, wealthy we're, pensioners, we're, you're taking it away from young people who this do. This says something about our values to look after people that have worked hard and saved hard all their life. They deserve security and but dignity what about, what about in old stuff? age. Now, if Chris one, one, wants one, to say like that to... they won't support the triple lock going forward, he's free to say that. We, Perhaps you can Sajid, ask him. Sajid, 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 Sajid was just talking about tough choices. What I want to know is if you want to take a tough choice, what about paying the winter allowance to those wealthiest 5% no, pensioners? One final I'll thought. put that we cut can... on the table right now, Sajid. Will you support the Will triple you support lock? It? Isn't, isn't this election, next election, about those who want to cut across the board and those who want to cut unfairly? That's what it's about. I think they do cut unfairly. We've seen it with the bedroom tax. We have to make sure, yes, we confront those tough choices, but when we make those decisions, we focus on fairness and, and the contribution that the, uh, right. that the government can make to supporting growth, it's getting the economy it's about maintaining growth and keeping to make tough decisions. You're a latecomer. Got, got to leave it there. Run out of time. Sajid Javid, Chris Leslie, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.